Hey, I'm Kier, and this is that vlog thing that I'm doing. Today, let's talk a little bit about vampires. Now, vampires have been popular for a really long time. Uh, Dracula himself is such a pop culture icon that, that there's no escaping the idea of what a vampire is. Now, of course, what a vampire is has changed a bit over the years. In the original uh, Bram Stoker story, Dracula is not some slick, dapper individual. He is more or less a desiccated walking corpse, uh, a very persuasive one, but still uh, not a handsome man most of the time. Uh, and that goes back to the folk myths of vampires, which were basically uh, description described by what people would see as corpses began to slowly rot, the drawing back of the gums that make the teeth look like they're elongating, the uh, evaporation of moisture from the skin that makes it look like fingernails are still growing. Uh, all sorts of little things like that, that unless you have an understanding of the medical principles behind it, can be uh, very suspicious and make it look like that person you buried a week ago is still alive. And if they died of some mysterious cause, like, say, a disease that you didn't understand that led to them coughing up blood, uh, which would then infect anyone around them and lead to those people dying in similar suspicious manners, well, it most certainly looks like you have some sort of monster going through your village, taking the friends and loved ones of that first person who died. Wow. <laughs> That's how this stuff starts. That's how these myths get started. This is how they set into the collective unconscious, these folk tales that they can get retold again and again and again. Uh, and then by the time science gets around to them, well, it's far too late. They're already part of, of our collective mythology. And that's kind of what happened with vampires. Now, vampires had a lot in common at one point with werewolves. Uh, they split off. And, and now it's general knowledge that vampires and werewolves are mortal enemies. Which is interesting, because while werewolves represent everything animalistic and natural in the world. Vampires are exactly the opposite of that. Vampires are the undead. They are beings that are made out of unlife. In some stories, vampires can float and fly because the very earth repels them because they are such abominations unto nature. Vampires in some other stories, came about because of some horrible sin committed by one person way back, be it uh, Cain, or be it uh, making a deal with the devil, that they had their souls ripped from their bodies, driving them so far away from God that not even the afterlife will take them, leaving them to wander the earth, causing havoc and creating more minions for the forces of the undead. Now, things have changed with vampires a lot over the years. Uh, vampires have become a staple of uh, romance stories. They've become action-adventure heroes and villains. And... They've played a bunch of different parts in representing societal fears. Now, in the 80s, uh, when, when a the AIDS crisis was just really taking off, there was also a spike in vampire fiction. And that's interesting because then you're dealing with the promise of eternal youth. You're dealing with a blood pact that will leave you dead, but not fully gone. You're dealing with a transmission of a state of being that is very sensual and intimate, 
but also directly connected to blood and bodily fluids. Vampires and AIDS kind of go hand in hand when you're talking about fears. It's that fear of something you do leading to your own death or your transformation into this undead monster that's only going to be a burden or a danger to people you care about. So that was, that was vampires in the 80s. Uh, things have changed a lot. Uh, vampires became a lot more political uh, along the way. And now, uh, when, when you see vampires not in the context of romance, uh, you're seeing vampires much more as a representation of the elite, of the powerful, of the rich, of the persuasive, of those at the upper tiers of society who are manipulating others, who are bending others to their will, and who are effectively uh, doing whatever they damn well please because they can. And that's something that we both aspire to and are afraid of when we're not one of those people, and we're usually not one of those people. Uh, we're afraid of someone pulling the strings behind the curtains, of manipulating the world around us so we don't succeed. And we're also a little bit afraid of what we may have to do if we really want to get to that level. Do we have to sell our souls to do it? Do we have to destroy the others that we care about around us to do it? Do we have to give up our autonomy and our free will to someone else with power in order to achieve a level of power below that one person, but still above everyone else? This is the political vampire. This is the one that's come about through Vampire the Masquerade role-playing games and a lot of other vampire fiction that's come out uh, since the 80s, especially through the 90s. And right now, vampires are kind of on the wane. They're, they're not as popular as they used to be. Uh, and part of that is because I think we've lost a lot of faith in that system of hierarchy and power and there's not so much that dynamic of people wanting it so much or being so sure that those who have it are competent enough to actually make changes. So that's an interesting uh, flip-flop that's gone on with vampires. They've gone from being your desiccated walking corpses to being effectively uh, your, your fancy celebrities and power brokers. Uh, but they still have that terrifying aspect of being creatures that can take away your free will. Of being so unnatural that in order to become one of them, you have to give up everything good within yourself. Now, yeah, we've had the tortured vampires like Angel from uh, the Buffy the Vampire Slayer series who uh, fights long and hard against his vampire nature and eventually gets his soul back and uses his vampire powers to do good. You have characters like Selene from uh, the Underworld series who's basically an action hero. That's not horror. That's action. That's fantasy. That's romance. The horror vampire is a rare creature these days. <laughs> so, if you see one in literature or in film, make note of it. If you have something to say about vampires, something that you want to discuss, something you think about what I just said about vampires, hit me up in the comments below. If you like what you saw here, uh, hit the like button. Uh, give me a thumbs up down there. Uh, also, subscribe uh, so you get notified of new videos that show up. Right now, they're showing up every day, so it's easy to remember. But if you get an email notification, you'll be even more sure. And 
Uh, share this video if you think someone else has an opinion about uh, what I'm talking about and if you think they'd be interested in any of this. That's it for today. I'm Kier, and I guess I'll see you tomorrow.